Good day everyone. This is our day 17 of our John Bird activity and it is entitled Environmental Laws and Regulations. Here we will talk about the historical background, environmental impact statement or EIS system, and pollution control law. For environmental policy and regulation, it includes the sustainable exhibition, sustainable procurium, pro procurement, sustainable designs, and sustainability awareness. Here we can see Edward II and Mark Lewis Edward II. He is included in the historical background of environmental laws and regulations since he is one of the um, people who established a law about environmental laws and regulations. Here we can see the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. They are protecting human health and the environment since 1970. Environmental Impact Assessment and Management Division. Uh, they are to promote environment-friendly and long-term growth, to predict, to predict and evaluate the ecological, economic, and social effects of growth related activities and identification of legitimate options and mitigation measures and to render detail on the environmental impact. Here we can see the Philippine Environmental Impact Statement or EIS system that provides the legal and procedural framework for conducting environmental impact assessments for projects likely to have significant environmental impact. For environmentally critical projects, it is uh, required. Uh, it is uh, the ERS is required, and the projects in environmentally critical areas, the project description and IEE are required, and EIS may be required. So the next one we can see here that the the table one for uh, in our EIS system, it is the environmentally critical projects it includes the heavy interest heavy interest industries infrastructure projects and golf course projects here we can see the environmentally critical areas in table two we have the national parks the aquifer recharge areas mangrove areas and coral reefs with critical ecological functions the next one is the table three that is required sections or outline of the EIS document. Uh, it includes the EIS summary, baseline environmental conditions, and accountability statement. In table four, who can prepare an EIS or IEE? It is the only accredited individuals, offices, or organizations are allowed to do EIAs and prepare EIS or IEE documents. For Table 5, it is the questions to ask when reviewing an EIS report. So, sample question is that, is the spatial and temporal scope of EIA adequate? So, the next one, we have the Table 6, this the how to involve communities in the EIA process. And Table 7, the fines and penalties under PD 1586. So here we can see the RA8749 or the Philippine Clean Air Act. It provides the policy framework for our country's air quality management program. Here in the Philippine Clean Air Act of 1999, um, it is an act which is a consolidation of House Bill 6216 and Senate Bill number 1255 passed by the House of Representatives on May 10, 1999 and Senate on May 13, 1999. It is an act providing for a comprehensive air pollution control policy. So the next one is the Philippine Clean Water Act of 2004 or the Republic Act of no, Republic Act number 9275. It is enacted on March 2004 and was published on April 21, 2004. 
and subsequently took effect on May 6, 2004. The next one is the Republic Act Number 9003. It is the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000. It is an act that um, is signed by President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo last January 26, 2001. Ang batas na ito ay naglalayang magtalaga ng sistematiko at komprehensibong programa para sa solid waste management sa Pilipinas. So the next one here, we can see the um, chemical hazard and biological hazards. It is the concept conceptual framework of RA 9003. It is the how to properly um, dispose our chemical hazard and our chemical wastes and biological wastes. So the next one, it is the Republic Act number 6969. It is the Toxic Substances and Hazardous and Nuclear Wastes Control Act. It is, um, it provides penalties for violations thereof and for other purposes. It's a one of the objectives of this act is to inform and educate regarding the hazards and risks of manufacturing, handling, storage, transportation, processing, distribution, and use and disposal. And that would be all for the day 17 of our Jumbo activity. And this is Christine Ansi Toquero from Group 12. Thank you very much.